On Larry King Now, meet actor, host, and adventure seeker Dominic Monaghan. All of my passions are in this show. Travel, people, new languages, new food, new experiences, animals. I got to a point in my career where I thought, you know, I can either wait for the phone to ring or I can do something about it. On his love of creatures. I keep a lot of reptiles at home and my favorite type of animal in the world is insects. So I tend to lean towards the slightly weird ones. And those are also the animals that have the biggest reaction of people. On being a geek. Yeah, I'm an animal geek. I'm a Manchester United geek. I'm a travel geek. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a buffalo wing geek. Uh, what else? Plus, your character gets killed. Don't tell anyone. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. You came to love him as the Hobbit Mary in The Lord of the Rings, that trilogy, as Bolt in X-Men Origins, Wolverine, and as rocker Charlie Pace on the hit series Lost. Currently taking us around the world in season two of BBC America's Wild Things with Dominic Monaghan, which premieres March 25th, 10 p.m. Eastern. That's Eastern Standard Time. What is this affinity for animals that people are afraid of? Um, <clears throat> Why do you do this? Well, I like animals in general. You know, I'm interested in the world and how it works and the animals that live in it and the animals that we share our planet with. It could very easily have been a nature show where I, I tell stories about animals people know. I do like lions and polar bears and tigers and bears, but those stories have kind of been told. I keep a lot of reptiles at home and my favorite type of animal in the world is insects, so I tend to lean towards the slightly weird ones, and those are also the animals that have the biggest reaction of people. You're a little weird, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's the concept of the show? The concept of the show is that I travel around the world attempting to change people's ideas about animals that most people are scared of by looking for a particular target animal that might be seen as being a little bit scary, a snake, a spider, a scorpion, a centipede, and showing that with a certain amount of respect, you can spend time with these animals and hang out with them and still have a great experience. You know, just because something's dangerous or potentially lethal doesn't make it any less important. Why do you think you like insects? Insects are the most successful animal on the planet. Um, they live on every other, co every continent uh, apart from the poles. Are they um, smart too, some of them? Are they're smart in ways that we aren't. You know, I mean, obviously we're intellectually smart. Our brain has evolved and our body's kind of been neglected, but insects are smart in ways that they need to stay alive. Um, they tend to look after their own. They tend to not cause a carbon footprint. They don't leave a huge amount of waste. They are innumerate. They can survive a lot of things that we can't survive. How do you know so much about them? Uh, I read about them. I learn about them. I spend a lot of time reading. Um, you know, I have, I have certain things in my life that I'm obsessed over. I'm a big Manchester United fan. I'm a big fan of travel and street food. And the other thing that I really like is animals. So in my house, I have animal books. Now you're a successful actor. You've been in successful series. You've had a great career. Mm -hmm. why, why would you take this on? There's danger in it. You narrate it. This is not, I would imagine, the highest paying job in right. the world. You can make more starring in a television series. Right. So the obvious why? Well, it's something I'm really passionate about. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about these things. All of my passions are in this show. Travel, people, new languages, new food, new experiences, animals. Because I'm one of the creators of the show, because I'm one of the producers of the show, I get a little bit more control over what we do, where we go, what we So you we came see. up with the idea. Right. So um, that helps me to have a little bit more control. I got to a point in my career where I thought, you know, I can either wait for the phone to ring or I can do something about it. Are some of these animals endangered species? Uh, yeah, we go this year to look for um, the giant Japanese salamander. That's an endangered amphibian, the largest amphibian in the world. We go in the first season to look for one of the rarest beetles in the world. I actually went to Costa Rica to look for the largest beetle in the world, of which it's so rare they've never found a juvenile or a female, only males. So we went to try and find the female. So some very rare creatures. You find them? Can't tell you that. Oh, it's in the next season, <laughs> right. maybe. The Obama administration announced in February that they're going to ban most of the commercial trade of ivory tucks and rhino horns. You, you buy that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, we were lucky enough to witnessed emergency surgery on an elephant in Africa, in Kenya. And one of the saddest things to see is that 
the poachers will actually just fire them with arrows, but they don't expect that the arrows are going to kill them, one of them. They think that, like, maybe 40 or 50 arrows will kill an elephant. So every night, for 50 nights, these poachers will go out and just put one arrow in an elephant and then go back. So for six weeks, these elephants are just slowly dying. So, I mean, I think that's great. And you also see these rhinos running around Kenya that have had their horns cut off and they're alive for a couple of days before they succumb to blood loss, you know. In a world of capitalism, why should we care about an endangered species? Well, they're important because they exist, you know. I mean, um, the vast majority of animals on our planet are, have become extinct. Over 99% of the animals that have ever lived on planet Earth are now extinct. Really? Yeah, we are in a very small group of animals that happen to be alive. We keep knocking them off. Right. And, and they get knocked off naturally. A lot of animals just die out naturally, you know. But a lot of these animals are being put under pressure from us. The, the interesting thing, for me at least, the beautiful thing about ivory is that it's attached to that animal. That's what I found so valuable about an elephant's tusk or a, a rhino's horn. As soon as you sever it from the animal, the beautiful animal, it has no value. So, I mean, I don't think there's that much real monetary value in ivory. How do you know where to go? Well, we sit down and have production meetings at the start of each season, and I kind of pitch the crew the animals that I want to go and see and where I think they are. And then the crew will go away, the research team, and they'll say, you know, this is practical, this doesn't work because it's the wrong season, this animal's actually moved to this part of the world, and then we'll build a show around it. You had a species of spider named after you? Yeah, uh, I was lucky oh. enough to be in Laos uh, a, a year or two ago, and I was with a biologist who, he and I were collecting spiders outside a cave, and he said, if I find something that's new, you can name it. Because if you find something, you're not allowed to name it after yourself. That's a faux pas in the biology world. So a couple months later, he said, it was a new species. Do you want to name it the Dominic spider? And I said, oh, no, name it the Monaghan spider. So sure. That's called immortality. Correct. We fight for it all. Dominic Monaghan, the Star Wars fanatic, when we get back. We're back with Dominic Monaghan. Don't forget, the Wild Things with Dominic Monaghan premieres March 25th, 10 p.m. Eastern uh, time on BBC America. You were a Star Wars fan. You were a viewer of early Star Wars. You were a fanatic about it. Yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, you know, I was born in 76. It came out in 77. By the time I was five or six, I think I'd watched Empire Strikes Back first, then watched Star Wars. And when I watched uh, Harrison Ford play Indiana Jones, I realized it was a job, and that's when I thought I wanted to be an actor. This is actually a Star Wars tattoo. This says, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. That's a quote from... Uh, Yoda in Empire. Why are you so attracted to it? I like the mythology of it and I like the escapism of it and I think it deals with I think J.R.R. Tolkien said there's only a few stories that you can tell you know there's not that many stories and it's a universal story it's you know how the decisions you make affect the rest of your life whether you turn to the dark side or the good side. Now J.J. Abrams who I understand is a friend of yours mm -hmm. is going to direct what the seventh episode the yeah. new one you're going to be in it? I don't think so. I mean, I've hit him no. up enough. I don't think so. I've hit him up enough times now that I don't think it's going to happen. He's your friend, and he won't put you in it. Yeah, but he gave me some pretty good reasons as to why he doesn't think. It's like gonna why? Work. Well, he wants to avoid casting people that people know. He wants to do like the original casting of Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford before they were known. Yeah. He doesn't want to put people in the Star Wars universe that people might have recognized. So Harrison, who, I spoke to Harrison the other day. He won't be in Seven. I think he might be because he has the right to be in there because he's earned those stripes, but in terms of putting in uh, other cast, he wants unknowns, I think. That's fine. I don't mind. I'll work with JJ at some point. I'm not that mad at him. I am actually quite mad at him, but I just didn't tell him that. Uh, for six seasons, Lost was one of the most talked about phenomena on TV. Why did Lost work? Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it was really well written. I think the casting was, was pretty fantastic. How'd you get the part? I met JJ. And we talked about Monty Python and uh, Eddie Izzard and Bill Hicks and comedians that we goofed off on. And I think by the time I left the meeting, he was like, OK, I'll see you next week. So I kind of figured. Um, I think it was just very well written. It was a great pilot episode. And it was a great premise, you know? It was everyone wonders w w how they got there, what happened, you know, how they met, the, how they got themselves into this place on this island. You take a risk with a series like that because it's continuing. So right. if, if you don't buy it first, you don't get to watch it again. I mean, right. you got to go with it right away. Yeah, and it was also one of the last shows on TV that you had to tune into. Nowadays with TV, it's all on demand and you can watch it on DVD or watch True. it online. 
This is one of the last shows that every Wednesday night you had to watch it, otherwise you'd miss it. Correct. Your character gets killed in the third season. Don't right? tell anyone. I'm oh. just kidding. I'm what? just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's been on. What are you doing to me? Don't do this to me. Why, uh, why, how did you feel about that? I felt okay about it. I mean, I, I... He died heroically. How did he die? Yeah, he died heroically. He died kind of saving the rest of the people. He, he drowned and sent them a message while he was drowning, which saved the rest of the people's lives. I think um, it was a great opportunity for me to get a nice crack of the whip. I mean, I was essentially, like, holding onto the baby and walking up and down on the beach for a season, and I just was bored of that. And then Damon Lindelof, who wrote most of the shows, had said, look, we found a great way to write for you, but it kind of has you leaving the show. And I thought, So you were happy and unhappy, right? That's I was a mixed combination of, Yeah, it was a combination of the two, but I, I wanted to make an effect... I wanted to affect a change on Lost, and I think me dying did that. They had a reunion, you didn't go, right? I was working. Lord of the Rings, Lost, X-Men, all huge followings. Are you... You, you have, must have a fan base that's enormous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really have too much of a handle on how big that is. But, I mean, I, I pick projects based on the things that I'm interested in, and I grew up with fantasy films and comic books and superheroes and stuff, so that's why I gravitate that way. And insects. And insects and Manchester United. Your big break was Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, a big international thing was Lord of the Rings. That was in New Zealand? Right. right. How'd you get the part? Um, I went for a general casting in London for, to play a generic hobbit, and as I was leaving, one of the casting directors said, uh, if you stick around, David Bowie's coming in in about 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, sweet, sweet. So I sat in the waiting room and I watched the thin white duke walk past me and then go into a room, and I was like, nice one. <laughs> and uh, then a couple weeks later, I got a phone call from my agent saying, you might need to fly back to London or go to LA to sit down with Peter Jackson and talk about some things. And then the day after that, he called and said, no, you don't need to go anywhere. They just gave you the part, so... I've interviewed Peter. He's an incredible guy, isn't he? Yeah, Pete's fantastic. I mean, I think the word genius gets thrown around a lot He's nowadays, a genius, but he is a genius. He has the ability to, you know, compartmentalise his brain into so many different places. He also takes a lot of the money that he makes and puts it back into the film industry, which is... Admirable. What was the experience like filming that? It was uh, two years of kind of being at university with a bunch of young, single men who were all partying and surfing and, you know, scuba diving and jumping out of airplanes and having fun. It's a big, you know, the fellowship is essentially a, a group of men. You got Arwen and Galadriel, but apart from that, it's kind of a sausage fest, you know, so that was kind of a fun uh, time. And we all did things that we'd never done before and, you know, Pete makes big movies, so being on a big movie, you know, doing battle scenes with 400 people on horseback and stuff like that, pretty special. How'd you like New Zealand? Love New Zealand. I just went back there for the second season of Wild Things, went looking for the world's largest insect, which is called a wetaponga. What's special about New Zealand? I think it's the, so remote. Yeah, I think the isolation is a big thing, you know, it's surrounded it's by the ocean. It's far from Australia. <laughs> right, it's super far from Australia. It's like five hours to yeah. Australia. Um, I think the isolation really helps. They have a lot of very unique species there, unique species of animal, but they also have a unique species of human there. The Kiwi human is quite idiosyncratic. And really? They do think, yeah, they do things their own way, you know, uh, a little eccentric. Dominic Monaghan, what a, what a guy. Coming up, uh, he grew up in Germany. More about that after the break. We're back with Dominic Monaghan, and don't forget Wild Things with Dominic Monaghan premieres March 25th, its second season at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You grew up in Germany. Where, Berlin? Yeah, I was born in Berlin, yeah. Um, what did your father do? My dad's a teacher, and my mom's a nurse, and there was a program, I'm sure it's still existing nowadays, whereby British people can go over and teach the Army Forces children uh, at school, and then my mom, being a nurse, was working at the Army Forces How much hospital. time did you spend in Germany? Lived there until I was 11. And then Speak German? Ein bisschen. A little. Ein bisschen. Yeah. See, Yiddish would be abyssal. Oh, is that right? That's right. Nice. Yiddish is a bastardized German. Right, right. Were you there when the when the wall came down? I just left when the wall came down, but it was a profound thing for my mom and my dad. You know, they were very emotional over it. We would go see the wall and go to Checkpoint Charlie and stuff like that. Did I, you like Germany? I love Germany. I love the German people. I love the food. The weather's fantastic. They love football. Um, Berlin, a great city? Yeah. and it's, Nightlife. Yeah, of, it's, you were only 11, though, right? Yeah, but I've gone back as an adult. It's very much dictated by young people, and there's great street art there and uh, great music and stuff. Yeah, it's a cool place. You call yourself a geek? Sure. Why? Well, it I think... It seems like a put-down. 
No, I think it used to be a put down, kind of like nerd and geek were a put down. But I think geeks are people that have interests in things and they're unashamedly interested in things. And people I have that. People computers call themselves geeks. Well, that's a computer geek, but I think you can be like a video game geek. I think you can be a high heel shoe geek. I think you can be an insect geek. You can be a- What kind of geek? geek are you? You're a varied geek. Uh, yeah, I'm an animal geek. I'm a Manchester United geek. I'm a travel geek. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a buffalo wing geek. Uh, what else? Hmm. I think that's probably about it. Tell me about the tattoos. Uh, well, you about transitions in your life? Is yeah, that... yeah, I tend to do them when I'm going through changes. So I got my first one when I did Lord of the Rings, and then I got stars on my feet when I was having some kind of dodgy time in L.A. where I wasn't working and hanging out with the wrong people. And then I'm a big Beatles fan, so I have two Beatles tattoos. I have uh, Living is Easy with Eyes Closed, Misunderstanding All You See, which is a line from... Strawberry Fields Forever, as I'm sure you know. And then the last line that the Beatles sang on a song called The End uh, is a Paul McCartney line, actually, which says, the love you take is equal to the love you make, which I thought was kind of kind of profound. Um, this was done by Kat Von D, who's a good friend of mine. Uh, doesn't it hurt? Yeah, but it doesn't hurt. You've been hurt way worse than getting tattoos before. Really? Yeah, being tattooed is like being flicked with a sharp pencil. I don't imagine you're married. Why would you say that? Because you travel too much. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> right? I mean, well, well, your wife would have to be traveling with you. That is probably true. No, I'm not married. Um, but I'm in the market. <laughs> You're active in social media? Yeah, I have a Twitter handle, which is... What is uh, your handle? It's uh, Dom's Wild Things. Dom's I, Wild Dom's Things. Dom's Wild Things, and then I have an Instagram account, which is called Wild Things Dom. I am told, my tipster tells me, that a few years ago you spoke out on Twitter against the show Swamp People for their treatment of alligators. Yeah. And also against the former co-star Matthew Fox for his alleged beating of a woman. Right. Uh, so you're very opinionated on Twitter. Well, yeah, I mean, I Did have you a... Get in, do you have any problems over that? No. Uh, I, I mean, I think, like, shows like Swamp People, where they show people shooting alligators in the head is a TV show that I don't really want to see. And then as a human being on this planet, I have opinions about people that I'll voice because I have one, you know? Yeah, you're damn right. You're heading to Sweden, I understand. You're going to film a TV show called The 100 Code about a New York cop that goes to Sweden to catch a serial killer. Yeah, Are and you the cop? Yeah, and it's interesting because I've been listening to your voice while you've been uh, talking to me because I'm thinking, well, his voice, you know... It's... Yeah, you have to find an American voice. I've got to find an American voice. So I'm well, actually... listen, I've got a, that kind of voice. I can <laughs> be a do, cop. You do have it. I have the kind sign of a cop sound. I'm going to go spend about uh, 10 days in Hell's Kitchen, Queens and Brooklyn and uh, spend some time with New York cops and learn about how they speak and work. Why Sweden? Well, it's being made in Sweden. It's a Swedish production company, the same production company that made The Killing and The Bridge. Uh, Is it an American called. show or a Swedish it's show? It's a Swedish show, but it will come over to America. Um, You'll speak in English. I, I will speak in English as an American cop. You know, Swedish shows are very sexy right now with the, with the bridge and the killing, so this is a new version of those shows. Now, are you going to be able to continue doing wild things while doing all this? Yeah, I'll do the Swedish cop show till around about October. And then I'll probably do Wild Things till April or May of 2015, and then I'll do the Swedish Cup show again. Of all the things you do, is acting the favorite? It is, actually. Um, acting is my number one passion. Acting is the thing that really gets me up in the morning. So going to do this Swedish Cup show is exciting. Why do you like it so much? I like trying on new hats and learning new things about myself when I do that. And I like disappearing into other people. But have you been injured? Yeah, I got injured this year. This is about 40 stitches from an animal that bit me in Thailand. Uh, and I've been to hospital a few times from... You get animal. mad at the animal when it bites you? No, I get mad at myself. It's never the animal's fault. Social media questions, uh, questions rather, and if you only do, right after this. We're back with the incredible Dominic Monaghan. We have a... Uh, we found a picture of you on your Twitter page... Please explain what you're doing. No, what, nice. What the hell is that? Yeah, that was sometime this week. I did a little comedy skit for a show called The Nerdist with Chris Hardwick, and I played a time-traveling superhero. They wouldn't let me keep the costume, which hurt my feelings a little bit. You are on The Nerdist? Yeah, I was on The Nerdist this week. Wow. You look cute. I do, don't I? Oh, I like that, Dominic. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we have some social media questions. At Dominions United wants to know how much of Wild Things is prepared 
and how much is improvised while filming? Well, we don't have a script. There's no script per se. They don't have anything that they tell me to say. We do do a certain amount of preparation in terms of, let's say, the first, the first episode we go looking for the giant spitting cobra. We will reach out to people who work with giant spitting cobras in Kenya. How easy is it for us to find them? Where can we find them? Can you find us one? Can you tell us where to find it? So we do do some prep work, but in terms of what I'm going to say, there's no script. We go wherever we want. At Osaka E asks, which animals have been the hardest to find and film? The hardest to find are usually kind of rare insects because they're seasonal and they usually remain as a grub or a larvae for a, a long period of their life and then become a beetle for maybe a couple of months and then die. So you have to get there right at the right time. And then the hardest to film with, I mean, some snappy snakes are difficult to film with. Is the ant smart? Ants are smart in a different way, you know. I mean, they build a little colony something. Yeah, of yeah. course. At Eve Lai NH tweets, do you have any interesting or funny behind-the-scenes stories from filming season two of Wild Things? Well, I mean, we do some great stuff in season two. I mean, some of my favorite memories of season two, I go back to New Zealand where I filmed Lord of the Rings with one of my co-stars, Billy Boyd, who played uh, the Hobbit Pippin, and I was merry. So we went back to some places, and the great thing about that is that he and I didn't need to say anything to each other. We could be in those locations and just look at each other, know what we were feeling. Meanwhile, the filming crew were kind of watching and going, oh, how come you guys went so quiet? You know, so it was a nice... How do you view. define what a hobbit is? Hobbit, uh, hobbits are little people that live in holes in the ground. At Duvenel wants to know what your biggest fear in life is. One Direction fans? <laughs> At Warm Happy Cat says, please tell me this was not staged for Twitter's benefit. Uh, well, half and half. I mean, Billy, that's Billy Boyd. Billy and I will affectionately touch each other because we do enjoy each other. He is married, has a son. Uh, but we were, we were resting. He, we'd actually both done yoga and I was like, I'm tired, I'm going to lie down. Uh, Desi721 asks, what tore up your arm? Oh, I can't talk about what tore up my arm because BBC America are very keen to tease it oh, for the new season. See it for the but new it, it was a large animal. Finally, Toa Troman, if you were in a real situation where you were stuck on an island with a smoke monster, what would you do? Well, I'd hopefully, hopefully try and befriend it and then find a coconut tree and uh, see if I could try and make a fire. Those things will keep you alive. Play a game of you only knew. I just throw out questions and you respond. Remember the first girl you kissed? Yeah, Nicola Fenlon. Nicola Fenden, was it in Germany? Yeah, it was in the paint cupboard, and she, we both went in to get paint, and uh, she shut the door and kissed me really hard on the mouth. How old were you? Seven. You ever know what happened to her? What would you do if you weren't an actor? Oh, uh, I don't know, I'd probably be a teacher. A TV show you're embarrassed to say you watch? Embarrassed to say, I've been watching the Lindsay Lohan show on the <laughs> Oprah Winfrey Network. Yeah. How long do you think it'll last? <laughs> oh, Favorite Lord of the Rings character besides Merry? I like Aragorn. He's, you know, the human king and very sexy, and Viggo Mortensen smells of cigars, and that's I love Viggo. cool. Viggo's he's a good a actor. Movie. Yeah, he's great. Superpower you'd want to have? Uh, turn into anything, because then you could have any superpower you wanted. Most dangerous place you visited? Vanilla Ice concert? <laughs> Best place you visited? What's your favorite place? New Zealand. Best Star Wars movie? Empire Strikes Back. Favorite experience of your career? Lord of the Rings premiere, Leicester Square. Proudest moment? Um, proudest moment? Giving a Manchester United player a lost DVD and then uh, watching him watch it a few weeks later on TV. Are your parents living? Yes. They're very proud of you? I think so, yeah. You have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have a brother, teacher, who uh, lives in Barcelona. Biggest, best villain in film? Best villain in a film? Maybe Agent Smith from The Matrix? Hurley, Claire, or Desmond? Claire. Part you'd love to play one day? Uh, I always wanted to have a stab at Johnny Boy from Mean Streets, Martin Scorsese film, Robert De Niro, just killing it. <laughs> I see you as Puck. Oh, I've been I called Puck a few times. I was Midsum Puck with the, with the orchestra when they did Mendel. The, Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, Midsummer right? Yeah, Dream. I've been called Puckish a few times. Yeah, you are Puckish. Oh, thank I you. I was the first Jewish Puck. Nice. <laughs> Pet, I got great reviews. <laughs> Pet peeve. 
Pet peeve, uh, people who think that uh, the ground is a place to put spent cigarettes. Like, put it in the trash can, that's where it goes. It's rubbish. Just because you don't want it doesn't mean we want it. Hidden talent. Uh, I can go from a cross-legged position to a handstand. Okay. <laughs> Snakes, spiders, or lizards? Oh, man, that's tough. Probably snakes. Favorite saying? Uh, adversity is opportunity. And finally, your favorite creature? Ants. Ants. Yeah, ants inspire me. Thank you, man. Nice to talk to you. That Use was amazing. my voice as the cop. I absolutely will. I want to thank my guest, Dominic Monaghan. Make sure you catch season two of BBC America's Wild Things with Dominic Monaghan. It premieres March 25th at 10 p.m. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time, mate.